Welcome to this seminar about satellite remote sensing for crop mapping and fallow monitoring. I will start with a short introduction. So the objective of this work was to design an operational tool that can map crop area and the most important crop types twice yearly. So always for the summer and for the uh, winter season. We call the crops that are planted in autumn and harvested in early summer, we call them summer harvest crops. And the crops that are grown over summer are called autumn harvest crops. So we create separate maps for these two seasons. We use the tool for monitoring and for we can also generate maps that can be used as an input for groundwater for a groundwater model or for irrigation calculators. So as an input for other tools. The maps uh, are generated for the North China Plain, which is a, a large uh, area in, in North China, about three times larger than Germany. And we will focus on Guantao County in Hebei province and on Handan prefecture. These are the, the, um, the locations where we designed and tested our methodology. The method is based on optical remote sensing imagery to identify cropped area. And we are also using radar remote sensing data to identify crop types. And we are using unsupervised machine learning. So the approach doesn't need any training data. And we are using Google Cloud to run the algorithm. Then, so we have the, uh, a short introduction to the methodology. I will not go into details. So most important to know is that first we map the cropped area using the optical remote sensing imagery. And then in the next steps, we, we are mapping uh, wheat or maize within the cropped area. So identify all the pixels uh, within the cropped area that can be associated to wheat or maize. Wheat is the most important summer harvest crop. It is planted in, um, in October and harvested in June. And we are looking at the uh, uh, months January to May in order to identify wheat planting area. And in uh, summer, so for the autumn harvest crops, maize is the most important crop type. Maize is planted in, in uh, May and harvested in November. And we are looking at the, um, the months July to September in order to identify maize planting area. There are also other crops um, in, in the summer season. So we have also peanuts, cotton, millets, soya and vegetables, but maize are, is the most important autumn harvest crop and um, wheat is the most important summer harvest crops. And in, in a, during the winter season, there are even less other um, crops planted. So wheat is by far the most important crop during the winter season. And that's uh, the assumption also that we make so that these two crops are the most important uh, crop types in each country where we apply the algorithm. So we can only identify always the most common crop and we don't identify other crops. So that's the, the thinking that we first identify cropped area and then within the cropped area the most common crop type. And we generate maps of 10 meter resolution. Here you see um, on the left side, a, a radar image from Sentinel-1 satellite. And on the right side, you see an optical remote sensing image from Sentinel-2 satellite. Both images have a resolution of about 10 meters. Radar data are sensitive to soil moisture and to ge the geometrical alignment and characteristics of the vegetation. So it is more and more used for crop type mapping but of course, optical remote sensing data has a, a longer history for in mapping um, crop 
area and crop types because we can compute vegetation indices in typical crop signatures. But the big uh, disadvantage of optical remote sensing image, images are that they are um, not available when we have cloudy or hazy conditions. Here on these two tables, you see uh, for Guantao County, the number of available images every month uh, for the two satellites here. So Sentinel-1 um, is available since 2015. And we see that with a great reliability, we obtain every month um, up to six images. Maybe in the first year, we have a little bit like um, fewer images, but since 2017, we really obtained the images uh, with, um, with high reliability. While the optical remote sensing images, there are, here we have, we see data gaps, or in some months, only one or two images are available. Although also Sentinel-2 was launched in 2015. So we have much more radar data available and we use, uh, this is our, um, advantage and uh, we use it to, uh, to um, derive crop types in the North China Plain where we have frequent conditions of haze in winter and cloudy conditions in summer. So we use the optical remote sensing images by mosaicing over several months where we can be sure to obtain um, at least uh, some images. Uh, we can use it still for mapping the cropped area but for mapping crop types where we also need to uh, see the, the, the temporal evolution. Um, so the characteristic uh, signature of the crops, uh, the, the change um, of, the, of the vegetation over the season. So for this, we need more images and for this we use radar data. The focus is on the counties in the plain we, the algorithm works best um, where we don't have a lot of natural vegetation. So here in the mountainous regions, um, the algorithm is not uh, so powerful, but it really works well when we have here in the plain in where we have very little natural vegetation, which we cannot distinguish from, uh, from, uh, from agricultural fields with this approach. And this, up, uh, this uh, methodology is applicable anywhere in the North China Plain, but the demonstration that you will see is here for the Handan Prefecture, including Guantao County, our main uh, study site that we have visited several times over the last year. Yes. So here you see uh, some of the output maps already. On the left side, uh, a map of wheat um, for the year 2017 in light green and the dark green is other veg vegetation. So basically vegetable um, fields because in the winter season there is really no natural vegetation um, that is green and that would be classified as vegetation using our approach. So we see that really uh, wheat is by far the most common crop type in the winter season. In the summer season, maize is by far the most important crop type, but we have also some more dark green, that means some more other vegetation. For instance, here in this area, we, we know that there is some cotton farming. Here in this area, there is some tree farming. And uh, in the south, there is also some vegetable farming. Now we can zoom in. We see that we can map the fields with a high uh, spatial resolution. And uh, we see also that we have here in the winter season agricultural fields that are not classified neither as wheat nor as other vegetation. But in the summer season, these are used uh, for obviously used for growing crops. So this is agricultural area that is not in use in the winter season. And therefore, this is fallow area. And we can use the approach to identify fallow area. So this fallow area is identified by comparing the, the wheat maps of different years, but also 
by using the summer um, vegetation map um, to make sure that we don't misclassify areas that have been given up for agriculture. So because of urbanization as fallow. So the fallow area is really, uh, really only the areas which are not, uh, which are agricultural areas that are not in use during the winter season. And then yet this you see here in yellow and in green, it's the opposite. That's the areas that are used for growing winter wheat in the current year, but were followed in the previous year. So following is a, an important indicator um, for, for saving um, groundwater for irrigation. So then the total area of following is a good indicator of um, how we can save uh, groundwater resources, how much groundwater resources were saved. And here we see that is very common in the North China Plain. So there is really, there are large areas that are followed in, in winter because irrigation water is scarce. Um, we, we, there's uh, over pumping and uh, the groundwater table are, are falling. So um, there's is also no rainfall and really in the winter season, the, we cannot grow wheat without um, using the groundwater resources. And uh, so we have seen here with, by visually validating the map that we can, with this tool, we can adequately identify fallow area. And this is uh, important because the Chinese uh, government pays subsidies to farmers that follow. So we can compare the reported fallow area to the, to the observed fallow area. So the authorities can use this tool uh, for monitoring and checking um, how, uh, if their regulations are successful. So that farmers indeed are not planting uh, winter wheat in a given year. And we can calculate the total area of fallow area. And we see that, for instance, in this, exa this example year 2018, in every township in Guantao County, the fallow, there was some, there were some areas that were followed comparing to the previous year. That means that the wheat area decreased in every township in this particular year. And actually, this is also the case for all other years since the policy of paying subsidies to farmers for following was implemented. And uh, this was around the year 2015. So since the year 2015, the wheat area is decreasing in all the townships of Guantao County. And uh, it's quite interesting to note that the, the fallow area is even larger than what the, that the total area that was um, subsidized so the government has limited funds for, for paying subsidies. And uh, so, the, but the, so they cannot pay subsidies to every farmer that does not grow um, winter wheat. And therefore, so what could be the reason that we have more following than actually um, compensated by the government? The reason could be that farmers retire because the farmers are usually old in this area. Um, uh, then another reason is that maybe they got subsidies in a particular year and a farmer, and then in this particular year, he found uh, other uh, possibilities uh, for earning an income. And in the following year, although he does not get any subsidies, he still decided not to plant winter wheat, but um, he has an other occupation. Now we can look at the results on the, with a larger scale. So at the scale of the prefecture, several counties together. Um, and um, we can see that in almost all the counties, winter wheat is really the most common crop type. And only there are only two main centers where in the prefecture where vegetable farming is very common. So in this county and in Daming County here. And uh, I remind you um, that this 
algorithm is always applied pound, county per county and year for year. So the algorithm works in a fully automatic way. We don't need any training data. So it is self, it's, it auto trains itself with the data from a given county and a given year. And every count, the results of every county and of every year are totally independent. And given the fact that we have here so stable patterns, it means that the algorithm really um, leads to very robust results that that uh, that are that agree well with each other. So across years and across counties, that gives us confidence that what we see here is um, that what we see here is really uh, also confirms to the reality. Now, and we can use the maps to look at uh, changes over time. So here you see the area ch change between 2017 and 2020 in the winter crop area. And we see that the winter crop area has been decreasing over the last four years in almost every county. And the same map now for the area change in winter wheat. And we see that the patterns are very similar. So wheat, is, wheat area is decreasing in almost all counties. And that means that the fallow area is increasing almost everywhere because we have less uh, crop area and less wheat area. That means the wheat is not substituted by other crops when we, wheat is not planted. And now the results for the summer season. In yellow, we see the other crops and in green, uh, the maize area. Here, the patterns are a little bit less stable, which could be an indicator that the results are a little bit less robust and a little bit more uncertain. We will see that later when we validate, uh, when I show you the validation. But nevertheless, we calculate here also a, a change uh, indicator for summer crops here and upper right and for the for, for the in particular the maize area the changes between 2017 and 2020 we have more heterogeneous patterns maize area is increasing in many counties but also decreasing in some others uh, the summer crop area on the other hand is is uh, more stable than maize areas the patterns are not so consistent and that means that if we have an increase in maize area, that means that uh, less other crops are planted. And if we have a decrease in maize area, that means more other crops are planted. So for uh, Daming County here, we have to be very careful interpreting the results because this is a county which with a, lot of, uh, with a large fraction of other crops and the uh, algorithm works best when we really have to it works best in identifying the maize area when maize is the, by far the most common crop. But this is not uh, exactly the case in Daming County where we have also a lot of other crops. Um, so the, what, what happens when we have here, for in, if we have a difference between reported areas and observed areas, we should not automatically trust, of course, the observation from remote sensing but we should go to the field and check what is the difference, why is there a difference between reported and observed um, data. We also ma can map greenhouse areas. It's a, another algorithm that is ba based only on optical remote sensing images, but that looks at an, uh, almost all the months of the year so from, um, from uh, March to, to October. And the, um, uh, the approach has been uh, designed for Guantao County, in particular, a place called Cucumber Village, which we have visited several times, where the greenhouse area is strongly increasing. And uh, we see here that 
this is confirmed by the remote sensing imagery that we have increase of greenhouse area in cucumber village over the years. And we can visually validate here uh, the results. So you see the algorithm can um, quite nicely identify the greenhouse area in uh, green in this in this area in the, of Guantao County. But there is uh, some uncertainty, of course, in this approach, um, especially due to interannual differences in data availability and quality, because we are using only optical remote sensing images, and also because uh, the the greenhouse types might vary from county to county. We cannot be 100% sure that in other counties the approach works as well as in Guantao County. So we don't calculate here the changes over time. But what you see here are just like the, the counties and the areas with the largest fraction of uh, greenhouses. So here in the south, the south of this um, in this uh, county, we have a lot of vegetable farming, and so they're also using greenhouses. Guantao County, that's the cucumber village that we have seen before. But overall, greenhouses always just represent a um, maximum 2.5% um, of the winter crop area, and usually even much less. So uh, greenhouses are not yet um, a main factor uh, when identifying uh, irrigated um, irrigated areas. We suspect that greenhouses use more irrigation water than other crops, uh, than other crop area, but it is, since it is only a small fraction of the total winter crop area, um, it is probably not yet uh, um, one of the main uh, consumers of irrigation water. Here you see uh, pictures that uh, we were taking in the field. You see we have also uh, drone images here. And uh, we use the observations from the drone captured images, but also our own observations and also observations from ultra high resolution satellite images. We use those data to validate our data set. And I show you now uh, the results of this validation. So we focus on five main sites in Guantao County that we visited in 2019 in the winter season and for which we also have a very high resolution remote sensing images that also allow to identify the crop types uh, of the year 2017. So we have uh, here these five sites that are quite um, different in terms of crop um, patterns, so crop combinations. In, on site, site one, we have vegetable and wheat cultivation. Site two, mainly wheat only. On site three, greenhouses and wheat, that's the cucumber village. Site four is wheat in winter and in summer, some cotton also. And site five is a place with wheat and tree cultivation. And uh, here you see the, how we, we uh, selected now uh, randomly from each of these sites 200 pixels. And we hand labeled these pixels based on our observations. And then we compared the hand labeled classification with the classification from our tool. So here on the lower right, you see the, the mapping results in red, the wheat in uh, the greenhouses in green, fallow area in black, other crops in blue and no crops in white. And we can calculate then a, um, a classification accuracy by uh, calculating the percentage of pixels that have been correctly classified. And here, these results are shown here in this table. So we obtain classification accuracies between 80 and 90% uh, mostly in these, these five sites for the winter season. Also for the summer season, we obtain classification accuracies of around 80%. So 
So it's not much worse than for the winter season. But I have to say, uh, I mean, you see here that we only have here the validation for the summer season at site four. This is because we were not in the field in summer and it is difficult to identify the crop types from the uh, very high resolution remote sensing images. And therefore we only validated our product here for summer season, because this is a place where we know that um, there is cotton farming and maize farming, and we can identify cotton and maize by eye on the remote sensing image. But on the other sides, we did not validate this, uh, the summer maps. We also validated the individual products, so the wheat maps, greenhouse, fallow, maize, by calculating the classification accuracy of only this product. So if it is basically every pixel, if it is greenhouse or no, not greenhouse. And here we then we obtain very high accuracies of over 90% mostly. So that is a good result. That means that especially for uh, greenhouses in Guantao County and for wheat and fallow areas, we can trust that our product um, works very well. And because we all also wanted to see how well the approach performs in other counties, we used the statistical yearbook data uh, to, to compare the report, reported uh, wheat areas with the identified wheat areas identified through remote sensing. And we see that we have a good agreement in most of the counties. Here also the mountainous counties in the west of the uh, prefecture are included. Here we see that we have a larger difference, uh, for instance, in this in she, she County or in this uh, Wuhan County, we have unrealistic year to year changes. So that means the approach may not work uh, well uh, surely it does not work very well in these mountainous areas, but in these, um, in, the, in the counties in the plain, we obtain very um, good results also comparing to the yearbook data. And the same for maize. Here we have um, even a better agreement or a similar, similarly good agreement. So the R squared, the coefficient of determination is, um, higher than 0.8 and the difference, the total area of maize is 14%. Um, so we overestimate the maize area by 14%, while before we overestimated the wheat area by 6%. Of course, the, there's also uncertainty in the stat statistical yearbook data. Um, there, the reported areas may also not um, confirm perfectly to reality. And therefore, uh, we could say that our product is at least as reliable as the yearbook data. Um, this approach has been implemented in Google Earth Engine. Google Earth Engine is a remote sensing archive where uh, petabytes of data are available. It's a cloud-based geospatial processing platform for executing large-scale data analysis. And we can also use it for uh, interactive um, exchange and development of remote sensing uh, platforms. Um, so we can use it to, to um, show our product basically. And we, we coded an uh, Earth Engine app and implemented it uh, in, uh, in Google Earth Engine. And uh, you, I will make a demonstration shortly. So uh, with this with Google Earth Engine we obtain these satellite images almost in real time with only a couple of days delay and that means that our product uh, is available um, at the end of every uh, season almost immediately. Uh, the maps are available almost immediately after the end of each season. 
And uh, in this Earth Engine app, you are able to access the, all the products that I have show, shown you in the presentation. So the winter crop, cropped area maps, summer cropped area maps, winter wheat maps, summer maize maps, greenhouse maps. And uh, the best is that you can choose freely which county uh, you want to look at. Uh, you, you have a choice of 261 counties in three provinces. But before I make the demonstration, I come to the conclusions. So you have seen here an approach that, uh, that can identify the most important crop types and the cropped area in the North China Plain without uh, requiring any training data. It is, can be implemented in a fully automatic way. It, is, um, it generates results without um, the need of um, uh, changing uh, parameters or, uh, or um, you don't need any observations from the field. So you can use it for automatically map in a very good spatial resolution um, the, the most important agricultural indicators in the North China Plain. And the results are at least as reliable as the yearbook data and it is suitable uh, therefore as a monitoring tools, tool, uh, if there are inconsistencies with reported data, they should be carefully checked though. And uh, one comment about operational mode, so the outputs are available at the after harvest, so for the winter season by beginning of June and for the summer season by October, you can access the summer maze maps. So now I come to the app demonstration. I quickly stop uh, sharing my screen and share the, the screen of the, the browser. You, I recommend to use Google Chrome or Safari on Apple. Now on these browsers, there we have the best performance of, um, of this app. And uh, you have, see here the URL and you can access the app yourself. Uh, you can play with the app yourself and, and use it for your own purposes. You can uh, obtain the crop statistics and you can even download some of the maps. And uh, here, so now I show you the, the, how that this app works. So you have here a split panel. On the left side, you will see the, the maps, or the mapped products. On the right side, you will always have here um, a satellite image. You can also choose uh, which day. So this, we are now in, this, in the winter season. So you can choose any day with essential two uh, optical images between January and Mar uh, May. So we can choose for instance here, the 5th of March, 2020. Here we have only part of the, of the county covered, but otherwise we have here um, good meteorological conditions. 27th of May, for instance, let's see, we have a little bit more clouds. So they, they are automatically detected and removed. So that means we have data gaps. Uh, on the left side, you have see also a satellite image, but this is from Google and this has a very uh, high resolution. So it's a uh, ultra high with um, meter resolution or sub meter resolution. And it's always, it, you cannot change the date here. It's always uh, from the current year on, on the, right side, you always see the satellite image from the sensor that we use actually to identify the, our products. And you see here, there is a, a difference in, uh, in spatial resolution. So it's, uh, it's on the right side, we have 10 meter resolution. On the left side, we have high resolution. So now we look at the, the, the user inputs here. So we can select a year all the years since 2016. We can select the season, winter or summer. And we can also map greenhouses. Greenhouses do not have a season. 
so greenhouses or crops. Let's try now uh, to map the, um, the winter crops of Guantao County. We can also choose all other counties here in Handan Prefecture, or we can put prefectures. Oh, hopefully there is now not, oh, it, it switched to another prefecture. This was not intended. So let's go back to Handan Prefecture uh, and look at the results in Guantao County. Then we click on submit. And the first step is to identify the cropped area. We can zoom in a little bit. Here we have the possibility also to use Landsat 8 satellite imagery instead of Sentinel-2, just in case we have really, uh, we are really unlucky with Sentinel-2 data in a given year. We, we don't obtain any data or in, in the future, if the satellite is, uh, has some problems, we can, if that would be the case, we could, we have a Landsat 8 as a backup. Then we move on to the next step. So the winter wheat area, um, within the cropped area is now mapped and uh, it takes a little bit of time until the maps are displayed. Um, but the, the statistics appear a little bit faster. So we have already the total crop area per township um, of 2020 in Guantao County. We have also the total crop area here, 250 square kilometers. And uh, the total wheat area is still calculating. So we have to wait a little bit, but we can already continue to the next step to identify fallow area. And this is, uh, so here fallow area is in identified by comparing to a reference here, and you can choose the reference here as well. So usually default is 2017. And you can also choose if you want to compare the winter wheat maps or the winter crop area maps to identify fallow area. And you can, and you have here some post-processing options to remove uh, single uh, pixels. Um, so we, 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 we only, if we, uh, to make the results a little bit more, the maps a little bit more smooth. We have um, these options to identify outliers or to use object-based image analysis to post-process the map. And uh, though these are default settings, I recommend to use them. Now we have already the, the winter wheat statistics and the fallow area takes um, still time to, to calculate, but we, I show you here already the cropped area. And then with the opacity sliders here, we can switch on or switch off different layers, but we always have to wait until um, the layers are, are, are loaded. So we have to be a little bit patient with this tool, a couple of minutes sometimes. Um, and uh, so then we will obtain the results. And uh, here on the, uh, actually you see here by this bar, if the, uh, the progress in loading the each layer. So now the, the wheat area is loading. The wheat air, total wheat area is about 180 square kilometers. In comparison to the total crop area, that means there are only about 70 square kilometers of other crops or in this uh, particular year, 2020. I will uh, now mm, move on to the summer season because it may take time to load the, um, the maps um, and uh, show you the output for the summer season. So we select summer here, we click on submit. Again, we have the possibility to use Landsat 8 as a backup. Then we click on continue while 
still waiting while, while the results, results are loaded, we can already click on continue. And uh, then uh, one by one, the outputs will appear here in the output panel. And um, the, there is no third step, so we don't map fallow area in the summer season. There is only one other option here, uh, so we can consider maize as, as the most important some autumn harvest crop or yes or no. If we select no, then we just get the inverse of the result. So all the pixels that were classified as crop area, but not as maize, uh, would then be classified as maize if we select no here. We also have the option to download satellite images. So we can click here um, to create a download link. And uh, then you can click on this link and it will automatically download the, in that case, the total crop area map to your computer. And uh, you can download all the maps in theory, but in practice, uh, it will not uh, always work because Google has a limitation on the total data traffic. Uh, so the, there will be, um, there, there are limitations and that means that you, there will be, uh, sometimes the, the downloading of the map will not work. And uh, especially for the, for the, for the fallow area maps or the sometimes also wheat or maize maps, uh, the app has difficulties in, uh, in allowing you to download the maps directly through the app. So in case you are interested in um, an app, in a map and you cannot download it, you can write me and I help you. And um, so here we are also still waiting for the outputs. Let's switch on the cropped area map. And uh, it's uh, now the maze map is already, already loading. So it will first load the maze map and then it will load the cropped area map. And uh, you see here on the, on the right side now, we have the Sentinel-2 image, not from the winter season as before, but you can choose the images for the, for the months that were used to identify the summer crops and the maize, maize in particular. And um, so we can also go uh, anywhere else. We can go to, uh, to uh, any county in uh, Hebei province, for instance. We can choose a different prefecture. So for instance, we can choose this prefecture here. And then all the counties in this um, other prefecture. And again, we can choose winter or summer season, greenhouses, and we can generate the outputs that you have seen before. So I think uh, that's it. Thank you for listening to me and I hope uh, you have uh, some, uh, gained some interest in the, you want, I'm happy if you try out our application and send me some feedback.